Good morning, everybody. Today is June 3rd, 2021. Welcome to another installment of Autodesk Virtual Academy here today. We got some great, interesting topics and guests on the docket here today, and glad to be here. My name is Adam Evangelista. I'll be your host here for today. Man, time really flies, but um, it's already June right now, am I right? Uh, we have a very special guest for us over here. Um, Phil has a few interesting facts, and before we you know, discuss this, we couldn't really settle on one in particular. Um, <laughs> He's uh, he's really tall, though, he told me, so I'll let him share more info if he wants, but he is extremely tall. I think like six, seven or something like that, he told us last time. Uh, Phil, do you want to introduce yourself here, man? Hey, I'm Phil Steiger, and I am I work here at Kativ, and I am the managed service specialist. Uh, yeah, glad to have you here, Phil. Yeah, Phil's been a major nice player. Thanks for being here. Yeah, Phil's been a major player here at Kativ lately, and uh, I think there's only bigger and better things in the future awaiting him. And so I'm glad we could have you on ABA before you get too busy with everything else going on over here. And uh, I know you work with a lot of vault. Is that right, Phil? That is correct. That's what I've done for the last uh, 12 years. Oh, fantastic. Yeah, I, I had a few questions about vault myself. You know, I was I was just getting into an argument with one of my coworkers, and I was like, hey, uh, you can't work with DWG and SolidWorks and PDF files and in, in Vault. It's only for inventor professional. Now, am I right or is he wrong? That's so, a that's a big misnomer. Oh, oh no. <laughs> okay, that's all right, Matt. And so and we'll, we, we'll get into that today and what you can and can't put into Vault. Perfect. Okay, <laughs> I'm glad uh, I'm glad you're here then to help uh, correct some <laughs> misunderstandings about the uh, software over here. So I'll go ahead and uh, hand it off to you here. Um, again, this is a Zoom meeting. It's a webinar style one, so there should be a few tools at the bottom of your screen. There's Q and A for kind of uh, slated questions, and then there's a chat menu as well if you want to interact with us directly. Um, and we'll be sending links there if we need to from there. But um, otherwise. Uh, Oh, and also there's going to be a survey at the end if you want to have um, any feedback as well. Um, typically, this is, you know, or this is probably going to be a pretty high level conversation for the most part, but any feedback is much appreciated. Take it away, Phil. Let's see what you got. Uh, thanks, Adam. Um, as you know, I'm Phil Steiger. I, I'm, I oversee all of our vault implementations, training, and um, upgrades here at Kativ. So one of the things that we've talked about here at Kativ is uh, some of the misnomers around Vault. So we'll get into intro impact of unstructured data and the benefits of Vault, and then we'll have some Q&A around that. So a little bit about me, you know, that I work here at Kativ. Over the last 25 years, I was in IT and my main job was managing and supporting engineering software. And one of my biggest uh, jobs was uh, overseeing a, a large vault environment at my last company. So before we get started, uh, we have a couple of poll questions and Adam's gonna send out those poll questions right now if you guys could answer them. Yeah, so I got the first question. Are you currently using vault to manage your data? I would hope mostly yes, but these are both competing percentages so far. All right. <laughs> you know, surprisingly even spread over here. Yeah. Okay. I'm going to cut this short at uh, 30 seconds here since we have two other poll questions to get through as well. And so I'm going to end a polling right here and we're going to share results so everyone can see that. Are you currently using Vault to manage your data? 61% say yes. A good 39% still say no though. So. We have a good mix a of, people of people in the audience, yeah. And let me come back over here. We have another question for you as well. Are you currently using Vault to manage your AutoCAD data? You'd be surprised at how many people aren't, probably. I was going to say, yeah, again, really competing percentages looking so far here. And we have someone in the chat. Um, Vault for Inventor, but not AutoCAD. Right on. Wow, OK. So these results, are you currently using Vault to manage your AutoCAD data? Majority, no, at least you know, 14 out of the uh, reporting people here, at least. Uh, a lot of people, yeah, a big kind of misconception about Vault and AutoCAD is that they don't necessarily play well together. And it's part of the reason why we have this presentation going here so far. So um, see, there was a good mix here already. So let's I have one more question for you guys here. 
And are you using Vault to manage any other engineering data? So non-CAD data, non-Vault, what have you. And uh, I personally expect this to, well, yeah, I'm not sure if a lot of people are. I imagine most companies have to manage, manage some kind of non-engineering data for sure. And You'd be surprised at how many companies want to use another tool or yeah. just Windows Explorer. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Yeah, wow. Okay. I've uploaded some Excel files right on. Okay. And we'll cut that there as well. Using Vault to manage any other engineering data. Majority know in this call so far. Right on. But um, there you go. And so you can see there's already some kind of a, some kind of motivation for our discussion here today, Phil. But what do you think of those results so far? I, I'm not surprised, especially you know now coming over here to Kativ and interacting with a whole bunch of customers. Yeah, I've you know I've seen all the people who there's a misnomer around Vault that we only use Vault for Inventor. And that's a big misnomer. And that's why we're having this conversation today around this. And we'll get into that right now. And, you know, the numbers are shocking. And so if we look at, you know, the impact of unstructured data management and the time that is wasted by engineers or designers, you know, one in four companies waste 20% or more of their engineering time managing their data. So let's put that in a little perspective. If you got five engineers, one of them is lost to just managing your data. They're not being productive whatsoever. That's a huge cost in managing your data. And you can see, you know, the breakdowns here, but you know, if you using, I came from an environment back in the day where we were using Explorer, Windows Explorer to managing our engineering data. And I was the IT guy. I spent more time doing restores of lost data or trying to find files that have been moved in Explorer. I can't tell you the amount of time I spent, just how much time probably my engineers and my designers spent trying to find the data. So that's really what drives this conversation today. And if we look here, some of the most common sources of waste. First one is searching. If you've ever searched in Explorer, it's very difficult. It's not like you can search the metadata of a file. So you're just searching a file name. And if somebody's new to the company and they don't understand your part numbering scheme and they're looking for a particular part, I could spend hours digging through that, you know, that's just a lot of wasted time, repetitive tasks. And we'll get into this a little bit more in my slide deck about repetitive tasks that you have to do that by using Vault can eliminate a lot of that. Sharing data externally, it's not as a big deal, you know, but it could, you could improve it. One of the other things, tracking ECOs, and release process, that's a big, big thing that you have to do. And if you have small, you know, have designs that have few parts in it, it's not a big deal. But you get into designs that have thousands of parts and trying to tra track that release process, that can be overwhelming. Same with organizing your project data. It's the same thing. You, it, it, it just, it's a time suck. And organizations don't realize it because they're not, you know, tracking every minute of a worker's production every day. Viewing design files and documents. How are you today allowing your shop to view those documents? Um, how are you allowing anybody else to view the documents? If you think, of, if you think about that, it, is it, do they have access to that file share and they can just go through and look at whatever they want? Yeah, probably not a safe way to share your documents. Conflict in document version. This is a great one because, you know, somebody does a drawing in AutoCAD, revs the name up maybe, 
but forgets to put the revision on the title block inside the drawing. So the next person goes and opens it up and goes, oh my God, is it B or is it A? And now they're spending time going and figuring that out. You know, wasted time. Losing design data. That's, that's an easy one. You know, accidentally deletion and explore or saving over a file. Quick way to lose your data. Sharing, viewing design files, documents and sharing data sort of go hand in hand. And you probably should, they should have put those two together. But I'll, I have some, I have a slide in here that talks about how, you know, you can simplify sharing data with internal colleagues. So you're not, maybe not having to load another application on their desk or taking up a license for them to view information makes it very simple. So there is good news. All these issues can be solved with Autodesk Vault data management. Software can help you manage, track, organize your product data without impeding your design workflow. It actually can improve the workflow of your business if it's set up correctly. So getting back to that, what I talked about in the beginning, the misnomer of if I'm using Inventor, I can have Vault, but you, you don't think about all the other applications that Vault can manage. Natively, there's a lot of Autodesk products here that you can use outside of maybe Inventor or AutoCAD. Now I'm gonna put an asterisk by that because some of these applications that Autodesk has, it doesn't do a good job of managing them. But for the most part, most of these applications can store and manage those documents inside a vault. I think the biggest benefit here is in the middle, the PDF, the DXF, the DWF, and the step file. I think those are the best. I mean, for a, a manufacturing facility, you got you have CNC, you have um, CAM and stuff like that. Having, making sure that the shop is working off of the latest and greatest version of whatever you're producing is huge because I've seen it where somebody's using a plasma table and they're cutting out a whole bunch of parts and they're using a file from two weeks ago and that part has been changed. And now I've just scrapped $20,000 worth of material because the, the document control wasn't there. And Autodesk just came out with a, an add-in for Vault for Make that, that'll attach into CAM and CNC machines so that you can share those documents, so those uh, machines can grab it straight from Vault, the latest and greatest. I just watched a video on that this week. And then you get down to your office, which is you know your basic files, your office. You can save all of your office information about that project in Vault. And the last thing is the third-party connect to SolidWorks, MicroStation, ProE, or Creo, what it's called today. You know, if you're using some of those also in your business, you can manage those drawings inside of Vault. And a lot of people don't realize that. So these are other applications that Vault has the capability of managing outside of Inventor, which we all think that's where it's at. Just to emphasize the point here, um, someone had asked, does Vault manage DWG? And the answer is yes, absolutely. Um, but hey, do you wanna say anything else to that regard? It does, and, and, and some of the things I'm gonna talk about here about DWG and how it can make your life so much easier. You know, and let's just go and talk about my next slide here. You know, it's being able to search that DWG inside a vault compared to using File Explorer. Now I'm, I can look at attributes in the title block. You know, I can have a more, it has so much more metadata around once you put it into vault compared to if it's sitting on a file share. So much more information comes back that I can search upon instead of just searching on a 
part number or a job number, I can search keywords inside the drawing, which makes it so much easier to find things. <laughs> Explorer is horrible to find things when you're searching. If you put it in Vault, now you have this really powerful database in the background that's keeping track of all the metadata that's associated with your drawing. And here's probably, I think, one of the greatest things is preser uh, preserving the history of that drawing. So if you, and, and I'll only go off my own experience in the past when we were managing our AutoCAD data back in the day, and I'm gonna date myself back in like 99, 2000, and we were using File Explorer to manage that. It was very difficult. We had a separate little database program for us to, you know, up for version control. And so, so one person, you could check it out of an area and you put it into this other folder and you worked on it and then you filled out a database to release it. And then somebody had to make a PDF and put it in historical, the old rev. And then somebody had a pro it had permissions to put the new file that you did and overwrite the existing working for production. A lot of waste of time. There was two or three people doing all this process. Those are hours that we're never gonna get back. Here, we're capturing the drawing history. You know, you can compare side by side the different ones. So let's say you're on version five and you wanna go back to version three. You just say, hey, I wanna, this is my latest release. You're not having to have somebody redraw version three because maybe you only save it as a PDF for history and you don't have that history. In Vault, you have that history. Great tool. Here's another great benefit. Reuse existing designs. A lot of people don't know that Vault has the capability of keeping all your XREF documentation in Vault. So you can set up a folder in Vault where all your XREF, the library where your XREF reside. So when you're checking in a drawing with an XREF, it'll look, and if that XREF exists in Vault, it doesn't write another copy of that XREF into Vault. It just points it to that library. And if it's new, it puts it in the library. It's a great way for, uh, you know, to save space. You're not com com continually copying the same um, file over and over again. And if you want to reuse existing drawings, you can just, you know, copy a whole set of drawings change it, change the name, Vault automatically knows where everything is, fixes all the indexing. It's just like when you're using Inventor. These are great tools. Rename and moving files and folders. You can move them wherever you want in Vault and you can rename things. And everybody who's using Inventor understands this, you know, hey, I wanna rename the file. Well, all the other files that are associated with that will know that and you won't break all your links. Same with AutoCAD, right? you, you move it to a different folder. It's gonna keep all of its paths for you. You know, drag and drop into folders makes it quite, it's just saving you time is what it's really doing here. A lot of time. Here's the other thing generating revision tables automatically. And I talked about this in the beginning. You know, somebody revs that AutoCAD drawing, revs the name maybe, but doesn't do it in the, um, on the title block of the actual drawing, you're spending time. Well, when it's being managed by Vault, it's automatically gonna generate that rev for you when you rev that drawing. So it taking the human air out of that process. And the more you can take the human out, the better off you are, you're gonna have less mistakes. So now let's talk about everything it'll do to manage all of that. You can start to apply life cycles. You can put work in progress. So 
so that the file is locked because somebody is working on it and nobody else can take the drawing and make changes to it. You know, you have you can have review and you can release, you can obsolete the drawings. You start to set permissions based on life cycle states. So certain people have the ability to release drawings to production because maybe if you're using a file explorer, everybody has the ability to just, you know, rev it up and everybody's looking at it on the production side. And now they're manufacturing something that isn't really released for manufacturing. You know, define the state of transition rules and permissions. It's a very, it's very powerful, just as powerful for Inventor, it is for AutoCAD and other uh, tools that Autodesk offers. Here's a big benefit, I think, because, you know, if you're wanting to share this, all these files with like the shop floor or, a, you know, non-engineering people, but they are salespeople. Most of you know, Vault has a thin client, especially if you're using Vault Professional. And that thin client gives everybody access. You can give everybody access to it <clears throat> with no licensing cost. It's just a URL and they have all the same search capabilities. They can view, print, you could even give them markup, but you're controlling all they're seeing is your released drawings, nothing else. And then if you're really, you know, wanting to move to the next level and extend it to Fusion Team with Project Sync, if you have a third party company that might be doing drawings for you, you can push things up into Fusion Team, your drawings up there, you can manage them there, have them do the drawings, they put them back, you put them back into Vault. But I really think the web client access is big. You're not having to make sure that they have some certain PDF reader, or DXF reader, or DWG reader, DWF, too many of those three letter acronyms for them to look at a drawing. Right here, they can look at the drawing, and open it up. You know, I think this is probably the best benefit of Vault there is. So let's talk about Vault family comparison. You can get basic if you don't have Vault right now, and that gives you some very basic intro to Vault, you know, some fast searching, version history, markup review, some copy design and rename and move. But if you really want the full power of Vault, Vault Professional is where it's at. It gives you all the other things that you need. And it, it's that step from, you can go from Vault, maybe you're moving to a, a PLM or you're wanting, you're drawing, you're wanting that data that you're producing in Vault to be pushed to your ERP system. Vault professionals where that starts to happen. You know, and I think that's a great, and we're, we're looking right now at how we make those connections that transition for companies to go from not having vault to vault to maybe PLM, especially if you're a smaller company and you want to start sharing data with outside manufacturing or your customers, you know, you don't have that technology to let people inside your office. That's there's a path in a relatively inexpensive way to give people access to that information. So speaking of Vault, here at Kativ, we now have Vault as a service, starting at um, $750 a month. And basically what this is, is we're now hosting Vault for customers. Because one of the things from coming from the industry that I learned, there's not a lot of IT people that are Vault savvy. They don't, IT departments, they don't have that vault specialist. You know, every time I would talk about engineering data at my last job, most of my IT buddies would cringe. So I came to Kativ, we built this, we host vault in the cloud for you. 
You know, we put a point to point VPN tunnel in place. It's a secure server. We take care of all the updates and patches. We take care of the server. Basically what it does now is it eliminates you from having to buy hardware and maintain that hardware. You don't have to, and if you're a small company, you're not paying third party IT to come in and manage the hardware. You know, the networking is easy. It's just a point to point tunnel. It's in Azure, so it's very secure. And all the day-to-day -day management is done by us and you get all the benefits of Vault. And I've put my email address if you have any questions about that, you can contact me directly. So is there any questions that I might be able to answer? I'll open it up to questions. Yeah, yeah. so feel free to submit any questions or um, chats and see the Zoom webinar over there. Um, I guess just a few curiosities for myself and Phil. I know for Inventor, you know, I have to install the add-in so that I could start, you know, adding stuff into Vault. Do I need something similar for like AutoCAD or like step files and stuff? Do I need any like configuration up front to start working with these extra files that I haven't put into Vault yet? No, if you once you inst well in 2022, they've made it really nice. There's yeah. no. <laughs> <laughs> you don't longer have to install in a certain order. Yeah, that's so extremely new can, in 2022. <laughs> right. So in 2022, you can install Vault first or last. It doesn't matter. The add-in will automatically show up in all the applications. And it's, it'll show up natively in all the Autodesk products that it supports. But then it'll also show up in your Word and your Excel and all that. There'll be a little icon for you to be able to log right it directly into Vault. So you don't have to do anything special. Right, 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 right. Um, yeah, I'm not sure if you could talk about this, Phil, but uh, we got a question here. Vault as a service starts at X amount of money. What dictates that price? We already have a Vault set up and running, but we'd like to, we, we looked into putting in the cloud before. What did, oh, well, what dictates the price is uh, a couple of factors, the size of your environment and uh, whether or not you're, the, uh, you're needing full SQL. So if you have a smaller environment with, you know, maybe a couple hundred gigs of data and your database is like three gigs and you're running um, SQL Express, the price is right around there, 750 or a little bit more. But once you start getting into where you have a larger database and you need full SQL, it sort of kicks it up a little bit because we also have to take into account, we have to have a little bit bigger server and then you're paying for the SQL per month. And we've done a lot of cost analysis and it's actually cheaper monthly for SQL than it is if you were to go out and buy a contract with Microsoft. Hopefully that answers the question. Right, right. Yeah. I mean, there's definitely a bit more details that go into that, Joe. So we could definitely reach out with some more information. Um, and let me share that extra information with Phil here on the side really quickly. And then a few other questions here. Uh, when will the add in for automatically exporting step and DXF files from inventor files come out? Um, I'm not aware that there is an add-in plan to automatically export step and DXF files. I, I know you can export, you know, manually from Inventor uh, to step and DXF, no problem. Uh, but I suppose uh, you're talking about, you know, you save a file, have it generated a step, and then check it all in in one go, like in a regular workflow. I'm not aware of anything like that, though. Do you know anything similar to that, Phil? No, I'm not. Yeah, yeah I, I could ask some other guys on the team. Yeah. Well, Nathan take... would probably be the person I would go to for that. Yeah. Yeah. Cause normally you would end up exporting the step and then you'd still have to go through the process of, you know, manually adding it as you would any other file. Um, uh, here's, here's one from Stephen Cooney. Um, not quite sure, sure. I understand this one. It says Metic hosting. 
Uh, what is loaded locally? I'm not sure I understand that question, Stephen. Um, unless medic is a different term I'm not familiar with. Let me know if you could rephrase that for me. I'm going to jot that down there. There we go. And uh, for Brian Kelly to specify the 750 per user, uh, the 750 price is that per user, per vault, per site, or per company? It's 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 per company. It's per your vault. It's it, you know. You, I understand that you might have a vault that has multiple vaults inside the vault, but that's just starting for your company. If you're hosting your, it's your server. Mm -hmm. Do you want to actually sense. go back a, a slide? Do you mind uh, just to look at no, that? Info go back again. Slide. And, and what I'm also, what we're also finding out, we have several companies now that have been doing replication to multiple sites and we've been able to eliminate that replication to multiple sites and put one server in the cloud and we're just doing tunnels directly to each site which is saving them a huge amount of money right 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 okay as i know this yeah there's been a lot of talk about vault as a service and i think phil you might even have more information than this as vault as a service is that right oh yes we have, I mean, if you guys, anybody wants to reach out to me directly, I have tons of information about vault sure. service. Absolutely, absolutely. Okay, and then here we have, uh, oh, from Stephen Cooney again, Kativ hosting, what is loaded locally? So Kativ's gonna be hosting what exactly and what still needs to be loaded locally? Uh, There's Stephen's question. nothing loaded locally. The only thing you're loading locally is you're installing the uh, uh, vault client on the user's machine. Yeah. And instead of pointing them to your local vault server um, locally, you just point it to the cloud. Gotcha. Okay. And then, uh, yeah, someone had mentioned regarding the uh, oh, the export of different formats. Yeah, some, some people have solved that same problem about exporting and loading um, step files using iLogic, it seems like. Yeah, and that might be, um, oh, that'd be an interesting problem. I'd love to see that code sometime. Um, and then let's see what else we got here, done. Gonna come over here, done. Understood, thank you, Phil and Adam, you bet, man. Okay, so, so uh, yeah, I know there was like um, some tiered, um, you know, there's like, there's some, uh, is there any other requirements to get started with Vault as a service, like any additional services with us, for example? Um, I think that's a separate conversation perhaps, but um, uh, yeah, is there like any other service offerings or structures you were talking about, Phil? Like the need for other support or something, for example? The only other, the only other thing that you have to have is you, you pay for uh, our standard support. If you don't have our standard Kativ support, that's the only other offering that's uh, added onto that. I gotcha. Okay, yeah. But the, the vault data management side is all included in that uh, starting at 750 a month. Right, 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 okay. And if anybody, you know, wants to go through that whole process of, you know, cost analysis, we're always willing to do that. Because so far, every one we've done, there's been a huge cost savings. You don't realize the amount of money you're spending to have full, I mean, uh, having vault on print. Yeah, that, that 20% figure you had earlier is kind of crazy to imagine just like one engineer just, just managing data and searching up uh, part numbers all day. Um, yeah, so I think there's a, I think that's about all the questions we got here. Um, now we got one more, hang on. Um, yeah, what is the AutoCAD drawing need in order to include rev control and alignment with vault uh, revision history? Uh, yeah, can, can you answer that, Phil? Can you repeat that? It's uh, what does the AutoCAD drawings need in order to include rev control and alignment with vault revision history? I don't, I'm not sure it needs, I think it's automatic. I think we can, you, you can set it up once you check the vault once you check it into Vault, Vault sort of takes over all the um, stuff and it will do it automatically for you. But I will, 
I, you know, I haven't played with AutoCAD a lot in the last couple of years, but I will verify that. Yeah, and I, I could speak to that question a little bit as well. Yeah, if, if, if anyone's familiar with like revision mapping or property mapping in like inventor title blocks, for example, right? There is some kind of mapping you would have to do to kind of update and push the properties from vault to inventor, for example. It's really similar to AutoCAD attributes as well, where you could still map from a vault property, like a revision version down into a attribute on your AutoCAD drawing as well. Um, it is explicitly different than what you see for inventor, mind you, but um, um, it's a similar process of setting up those connections for sure. Um, but otherwise, um, yeah, I guess it's largely a vault configuration, I would argue, but um, a similar, very similar to inventors set up for mapping properties. Yeah, and then Steven's confirming it too. Yeah, there's a specific data attributes you would define in the title block. Yeah, I think, I think it's an interesting process in general, which might require some more detailed uh, presentation in the future. Uh, but yeah, it's definitely something people do does require a bit of setup and configuration, but um, completely doable for every other purpose of Vault for just regular file control and stuff like that as well. You still get the benefits even without that mapping that we're talking about here. Sounds like another AVA for us. Yeah, exactly. I hope you're available next week, Phil. <laughs> <laughs> Just kidding, yeah. Yeah, absolutely, yeah. So um, yeah, I guess just to emphasize again, uh, I kind of led this conversation at the beginning that, uh, you know, Vault could pretty much handle a bunch of different files, right? So if you're just using it for Inventor, you're kind of missing out on a bunch of functionality for your other Autodesk products, but even non-Autodesk products as well, and non-engineering data in addition to that. Do uh, you have anything uh, else here, Phil? You want to, I don't know, summarize really quick, uh, take us home? I, I, I really do believe in Vault as the key for engineering, I mean, to manage all your data. It's where it's at, you know, and it's that first step in the evolution of moving into PLM or, you know, pushing stuff, bill of materials directly into ERP. Those are, you know, those are time savers and mistake eliminators. You know, you're making it, the bomb is automatically gen generated especially if you're using Inventor, yeah. why not just have it automatically push into an ERP system for you yeah. instead of having somebody else manually enter it into your you know, Absolutely. ERP? Yeah, we, we've been talking a lot internally about like um, kind of profiling different companies at different levels of like maturity and stuff. And so it's not even just like that Vault could handle AutoCAD, it's that there is a data management solution there that'll help you guys scale and grow and control your, your errors uh, moving forward. But sounds yeah, good. And, and if anybody wants to reach out and we can talk, because I've built a, a presentation around the, you know, yeah, even that customer so. journey around Vault and how, you know, the steps you should take to move forward with Vault. I think Absolutely. you've seen my Lego drawing. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> he's, put a, he's made quite a few presentations for us at this time. Um, that sounds good. Okay, I think we're going to wrap it up from there. Um, do you have any other uh, slides on here? I think this is the, the end, huh? That was the last slide, yeah. Perfect. Okay. That's about all we have for everyone. Thanks again for attending here today. Feel free to reach out to Phil or anyone else on the team if you want more information about Vault, Vault as a service, Vault and AutoCAD. We'd love to help you out some more. Thank you, Phil, for being on today and we'll catch you all next week. Thank you. Thanks, Adam. Bye, guys. Bye.